Hello again, everybody. Gary Furman and Matt Shodell here. And today we are talking about who will be the surprise breakout player on the Miami Hurricanes defense this season. And uh, Matt, uh, we're in agreement on this one, which is uh, kind of rare. Uh, I don't know what's going on, man. It seems like we've been agreeing on a lot of things lately as we have started diving into breaking down this uh, 2023 Miami Hurricanes team and getting everybody ready for training camp. And uh, Nigel Lee Kelly, and, and you know, you, you, you look at all the fanfare of Jason Taylor coming into this program as a coach and, you know, what that means. And uh, Nigel Lee Kelly is Taylor's first true project that has the capability and I'm not going to say becoming a player like Jason Taylor. I mean, come on, man. He's a, a Hall of Fame guy. There's nobody, including Nigel e. Kelly, that we're going to start comparing to him at this point of their career. But Nigel e. Kelly is the one guy coming up on this team uh, now going into his second season as a Hurricane who truly has the physical gifts to become an elite performer at the defensive end position. And, uh, you know, Jafari Harvey is the incumbent there coming in, into the season. Uh, Jafari had uh, a, a reasonably good, you know, good productive uh, year last year. But uh, you have to look at a couple things. You know, he's never had more than 31 tackles in a season. Um, last year, he had five and a half sacks, which is a, a workmanlike number. Not, not great, not bad. Um, but we think that uh, Nigel Lee Kelly is going to be able to do better than Jafari Harvey did last year. And that's why we are predicting that if not in training camp very early in the season, that Kelly will emerge and start getting uh, a large number of reps to where he is able to make uh, a big jump this season and have the kind of impact uh, on the football team that we are anticipating to where we are willing to say that we think he will be uh, the guy on defense that is the biggest surprise, that makes the biggest move. Uh, Matt Shodell, uh, your thoughts uh, just as you are watching this progression of Nigel Lee Kelly. Yeah, look, I think he's poised for a big season for sure, uh, with the caveat that I'm not sure you're going to be able to keep Ruben Bain off the field for very long either. So uh, I think the defensive end position is is – probably the strongest unit outside of safety uh, in terms of potential talent. And they probably have more depth talent than safety because safety just have two really, really good players. Uh, so yeah, you know, you have Nigel e. Kelly, you have Akeem Mesador, and you have Jafari Harvey, who has started, I think, 12 or 13 games in his career. You have Ruben Bain, who had three sacks in the spring game and just really looked like how you're supposed to look, you know, as a defensive end. And he could play defensive tackle also, he even lined up a tackle in the spring game too. Uh, Messador can also play defensive tackle. So there's a lot of moving parts in the defensive line. And uh, I think the defensive line is going to be really good. So, you know, I think we said uh, when we were breaking down the offensive player, uh, surprise player, Tyler Harrell, we said that you don't want to be on this list, you know, because it means you've you've never done anything before. You know, now you're going to be a surprise. But that's not really the case with Nigel Lee because he, he was a freshman last year and he did have four sacks, limited reps. I think I at one point I did some sort of weird math thing and figured out how many sacks he would have had if he had and tackles for loss if he had played the exact same amount of reps that um jafari harvey did and i and he he would have outpaced jafari in sacks and tackles for loss by a pretty wide margin um i can't remember the exact numbers i want to say it was like eight or nine sacks and 12 plus tackles for loss i don't know i have to, I have to do it all over again it's some sort of algebra formula which i don't want to have to redo but uh but the point being you know, Nigel League had a really good true freshman year, and the the jump between freshman and sophomore year is usually pretty substantial. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback that he's poised for a big season. But again, Nigel League wasn't playing in the spring. We don't really know what he's going to look like. However, Nigel League is a veteran. You tend to sort of get smaller incremental increases in how good you're going to be the older you get. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, when you come from high school to a college program, you usually arrive in the summer, maybe if you're lucky in January, if you're a genius like Matt Shodell, if you're Gary Furman, you arrive in the summer. And um, no, it's not, that's not a uh, indictment of people come in the summer. It's because they have late graduation times, people. It was a joke, okay? Mark Fletcher and all them, they couldn't come early because their schools don't let them graduate early, not because they're not as smart as people who come in January. So don't start getting on me. It was a joke. You can't just stay on point. It was I mean, a joke. 
We were but doing anyway, it so well, and he just couldn't stay on point. But the point is, these guys who come in as freshmen, they don't have much time in the program. You can't expect to gain 20 pounds of muscle or 10 pounds of muscle in a very short period of time. You can't expect to learn everything you need to know about the college game when you were in high school six months earlier. So that's why the second year you tend to have this, these big jumps between the between what you saw as a freshman to your sophomore. So that's what we need to start seeing. That's what we haven't been seeing for the better part of two decades. Uh, I think with this new coaching staff, with Mario Cristobal, uh, with the work ethic, with the how you do anything is how you do everything. Um, that's why I drink ginger beer every day because that's how I do everything is drinking ginger beer. Uh, you know, hopefully these guys are drinking ginger beer and taking their supplements and doing everything right. And I think Nigel Kelly is going to have a great, great sophomore year. I don't think it'll be a surprise because I sort of expect it, quite honestly. He's going to be in the rotation no matter what. Whereas with Tyler Harrell, you know, there's so many other receivers. If he can only run deep routes, I don't even know. If he'll, I don't know if he'll play that many reps. You know, Nigel Lee Kelly's going to play a lot of reps. He's going to be very productive. Not a surprise to me, but maybe it's a surprise to some of you out there in the uh, YouTube verse. <laughs> Uh, all right, so last year, Jafari Harvey had 412 reps, and Nigel e. Kelly had 183 reps. Uh, so obviously, Jafari Harvey got the majority of the reps at that defensive end position. Uh, but we can look at a couple things. First, we can look at the fact that Nigel Lee Kelly, he graded out at 63.5 on the year. 70 is considered a good grade. But that's not horrendous for a true freshman, okay? Um, he was a very good tackler, had an 82.7 grade as a tackler, uh, but he only was at, graded at 63.1 on run defense and 65.4 on pass rushing. Um, had 4.5 tackles for losses, four sacks. Probably wasn't physically ready. I think those stats tell us, probably wasn't quite physically ready. But if you extrapolate those stats, out to a full season, you come up with 10 quarterback hurries and nine sacks. If that's what plays, I, that's, those were the numbers, right? That's what I was trying to find before, yeah. If he, if he plays the same amount that Jafari Harvey played, okay, he ends up with those numbers while Jafari Harvey had 7.5 tackles for loss and five and a half sacks. So with the same number of reps, you're getting uh, – not quite double the tackles for loss, but about 50% more. And you are getting close to double the sacks based on what Nigel Lee Kelly showed that he could do when he was in the game. So we see this and we can only assume that Jason Taylor and Lance Guidry and Mario Cristobal are seeing that as well. And I think that there's going to be an effort, Matt, in training camp to accelerate Nigel Lee Kelly and get him to the point where – he could take on more of the burden on defense this year. He should be more physically ready after another year in the strength program with Aaron Feld. And that is why, like Magic, you and I are in total agreement once again that Nigel e. Kelly is going to be the guy that is the surprise step-out player on defense. Any closing thoughts? Um, I mean, I, I, would just, I would just add that... Kevin Steele used such a heavy rotation and you and I complained about it week in and week out. We don't understand it. I mean, you know, Leonard Taylor played less than half the game yeah, for the whole season. For the whole no season. And these guys need to be conditioned and trained and ready to play 80% of the reps uh, in these games. You know, it's, it's important. There, there is a difference between your first team and your second. And these coaches like to say, oh, you know, we need everybody to be starters. You know, we need the second team to be just as good as the first team. Well, you know what? They're second teamers for a reason. You know, if they were as good as the first teamers, they'd be the first teamers. You know, these guys aren't exactly the same. And especially with guys like if Nigel League steps up, Leonard Taylor, Akeem Mesador, Ruben Bean, you know, they have guys that can make some serious plays. But but across the board on defense, there's not a lot of depth. So, if you know, if Kevin Steele had a failing last year that hurt this defense to me, it was constantly taking out his best players and playing them half the game or less. Yep. And I think Lance Guidry, you're going to see the opposite of that. I think he's going to... These guys will be in the IV, getting IVs after games, not doing their interviews with the press. Yeah, they had a long time. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. The greatest teams in Miami history, they would get IVs at halftime. You know, they couldn't even walk. You know, they gave every ounce of effort to help this team win. And now in this modern day and age, it's like, God forbid, 
that you try to make somebody actually work to the point where they feel like they can't walk anymore, you know? I mean, I remember, I'm not going to name names, but there was players, there was a player during game last year who tried to ask out on the goal line, okay, on the goal line of an early season game and started to trot out, wave and come, bring someone in for me, started jogging off, and they're like, no, stay out there. Like, for, had to force him to stay out there, and he stayed out there, and he scored a touchdown the next play. I mean... <laughs> If you could score a touchdown on the next play, you don't need to come out of the game. It's this mindset that, that Mario Cristobal knows you have to change. One of the guys who transferred out faked an injury in, in a game so that he could not have to face these really good defensive players. Like, in huh? In the pregame warm-ups. In the pregame warm-ups. I don't want to – now people know who it is. But, like, this is stuff that was going on that, that you know, maybe the regular fans aren't aware of, and we certainly don't want to call out any players, which is why we don't mention names or bring it up. But, like – that's the mindset that existed with Mario Cristobal here last year, left over from the prior regime that has to change. And until that changes, you know, we're going to do stories later in the summer about the culture that has to change and some of the just overall things that need to get better at the program as we take a look. You know, we always do our State of the U series. Uh, but there's a lot of this nonsense. Uh, you know, you hate to use the word cancer, but you've got to cut cancers out of the program. I mean, you just have to, you know. And I remember, you know, that that crazy episode um, with Deion Sanders and Mark Pope, right? He's like, there's a cancer on the team and do we cut it out or do we let it fester? You know, uh, what do we do? You know, and then he has the, whoever wants Mark Pope to stay on the team, stand up and all the offense stands up. Whoever wants him to leave, stand up and all the defense stands up. I mean, it was ridiculous and stupid. Uh, and Mark Pope did wind up back on the team at, later in the year. But but the point is, you know, Mark Cristobal has these decisions to make. He's not going to let the team make the decision. He's the coach, okay? No coach in his right mind just ask the bunch of 18-year-olds to 21-year-olds to make decisions for the entire program. I think that's ridiculous, um, but that's showtime, I guess. And uh, and Mario has these decisions that he has to make. You know, who are the guys that my other players are seeing being lazy? That you know that I don't want them to see that. You know, if you have if you have children and they have friends and their friends are doing the wrong things, do you want your children hanging out with those guys or those girls? you know, who are doing the wrong things in their lives? No. So Mario is going to have to really make some tough decisions because I'm telling you right now, there are still people left on this team that last, based on what I saw last year, they are not, they were nowhere close to being bought into what Mario Cristobal is doing. I'm not sure that you can fix some of the mentality things that I've heard from last year with some of these players. And some of them are good players. And at some point, if push comes to shove and they're just eroding the culture and morale of this team, like you got to let them go. And, and that's why I said last year, like, they needed to start from scratch, and Mario wasn't willing to do it. I still think, in retrospect, that that's going to have set the program back a year or two in what they could have been. But they're still going to get there at the end of the day. I mean, Mario works too hard not to get there. But that not that nuclear reboot they needed uh, didn't happen. He decided to go to the portal, took 11 guys, seven of whom didn't work out. Now he takes 15 guys from the portal. Hopefully they all work out, but my guess is at least half of them won't. And you're just loading up your roster with these guys. Uh, instead of doing it the way I would do it, which is uh, the Matt Chodell way of, of uh, Matt Chodell's way or the highway. You know, as I like to say, how I do nothing is how I do nothing. <laughs> All right. If you like this show, despite Matt Chodell, hit your subscribe button, hit your like button. Helps us with the algorithms at YouTube, they improve our audiences. And also, in spite of Matt Chodell, we would really, really, really like to have you as a subscriber to canesport.com if you are not yet subscribe to our website your subscriptions allow us to do crazy stuff like this every single day um so please 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 uh become a member if you are not so for matt Shodell, i'm gary Furman. thank you for joining us once again everybody and we will see you next time